So after we explored the complete town of Blackburn, went back out and continued on our trip. Not too much longer, you'll come upon Skeety Road. And well, we just had to go to Skeety because, I mean, how, how often do you find a town named Skeety? So we're driving up this like, you know, kind of gravel road and we thought, ah, this is probably a waste of time. And then there's this monument, like in the middle of the road. And it's like this weird little statue in this little ghost town out in the middle of Oklahoma. Who knew? Taking the back roads, heading to Pawnee. No US 64 for us. No, we are talking like Tulane, unnamed, middle of nowhere in Pawnee County. And we discover this. The father of all bacon, we believe. <laughs> Chief Bacon Rind. Must be. I never knew. So we really enjoyed Skeety. It was a very interesting uh, thing. I'd never been there before and, you know, just one of those great little on-the-road surprises that you discover in, out in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. But we had to get back on the road and get to Pawnee for the fast-paced, action-packed steam engine action. Grandpa hopped the freight train and came up from Louisiana. He heard about the old patch and the gold under the land. He left behind his ma and pa when he was just 15. Came to Oklahoma to chase a wildcat dream. Black gold. Black gold. Well, you know, Pawnee has so many different things going on, but for me, the first stop has got to be Steam Engine Park, where they have the annual steam engine show. It's always held in May, and it's one of the largest in the Southwest, from what I understand. And uh, it's just contraptions of all shapes and sizes, and uh, it's all big and heavy and greasy, and, and it's just a, a, a really fun time. We're here at the Oklahoma Steam and Gas Engine Show, and we met up with Jeff Detweiler who seems to know a whole heck of a lot more than either one of us do. So we're gonna give him a chance to talk. This is probably the only place in Oklahoma where you can step out of your car and step back about 80 years in time. This, uh, the steam show started out in about 1964. What we've tried to do here is recreate an early agricultural setting. So in the 19 teens and 20s, after steam left the rails and came to the farm and started what was known as the agricultural revolution, that's what we're here to preserve and to uh, educate our younger generations okay. on. So you, you don't just have the static exhibits Absolutely. here. I, I see them all running and, and people stoking the engines. Is that the right word? Yes, Yeah. we like to exercise and, okay. the engines. And I, I guess you, you do some demonstrations with the things yes. to like to show them off, show what they normally do. Right, and we try to put them through the paces that they did when they were first coming out of the factory back in the teens and 20s. We run a full-size sawmill here, and so we take logs, full-size logs, and we'll turn them into dimension lumber. Cut them up for the kids to play with. Cut, well, we make shingles. <laughs> oh, we have a shingle okay, mill. Okay. So we have the full start to finish from a lumber-making operation. Well, it looks like a lot of fun out here. It is. Um, there's something for everybody. I, I love history, and my, my family, my grandfather was a, a steam engine operator, and I fell in love with it so much that I had to buy one myself about 10 years ago. What kind is it? It's a case. It's a 1921 65 horse case steam traction engine. You want to go take a look? Let's go take a look. All right. So this is it. This is her. This is a 91 year old piece of history. It's a JI case 65 horse steam traction engine. It was used to plow the prairie sod back in the days when steam left the rails and came to the farm. Um, with this engine, I can power a threshing machine. It ran a sawmill, uh, feed grinders. You could... Uh, so they didn't just use them out 
feel right. And they were any means of power they supply on the farm. Yes. Can we hear a run? Let's take a look. All right. Mm. I've never driven a steam powered anything, let alone this big monster of a tractor. Nothing about these things happens right now. Everything happens eventually. You turn the wheel five, 10 times, 10 revolutions, and it'll start turning. We went over and watched the incline test where they run these things up a huge incline, go up, stop, and then have to go again, and then come back down. And it looked tricky enough knowing after I drove this one tractor, how hard they are to control. It was pretty fascinating that they could do this with the steam tractors. Got, so got, got me a shingle huh? and a, a small hay bale. Oh, in the center of Steam Engine Park is this thing they call the powerhouse. Uh, inside, it's really cool because they have like a, a vintage style machine shop set up and uh, a boiler outside that's running a very, very rare coreless steam engine. This engine is a, uh, an Alice Chalmers coreless engine. It's a steam engine that provided the power for the, for the zinc smelting plant in Blackwell, Oklahoma. For the whole plant. For the entire plant. It was built in 1916, and this engine gave 45 years of continuous use without any breakdowns. And I guess it, it's still running. And it's still no. running. We, we, we got it out of the zinc smelter plant in 1974 when they were closing and gonna demolish the plant. We rescued it from the plant and brought it here, set it up, built the foundation, built the barn around it, and so we could preserve that piece of history. Uh, really, it's neat to see up close. It's, and it's just people can get hands on and get up close and see just you know what it took and how beautiful these machines were. Because it's a piece of art as much as it is a mechanical uh, wonder. So anytime I lost Rex, I knew immediately, oh, look for the quilting. And sure enough, found the big quilting building where they were displaying them all. There he was, hanging out there. Yeah. Rex had to stop by and check out Three. the quilts. Mm -hmm. everywhere, exactly. we, okay. everywhere we go, he has to check out the quilting. Sure, I love work. I gotta admit, I'm surprised none of them seem to have a steam engine motif. I guess I was expecting there'd be at least a couple that would be, you know, kind of, you know, getting with the, the program here. So after seeing the quilt display, I was so excited. I ran home, bought me a serger, sat down. I am working on a crazy quilt. Let me tell you, it is something else, man. It is awesome. Some peanuts would really hit So I had a blast at the steam show. If you ever have a chance, you've got to get there. They sell uh, food and souvenirs and I'm sure shirts and everything else and, and quilts. If I didn't mention that, Rex would be upset. So get yourself to the Pawnee Steam Show. <laughs>